Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome back to our channel. We're about to get started with shearing here this morning. As I indicated in our last video, um, we were hoping to get these sheared up in the next week or two. So here we are. And uh, we're gonna start with our ewe lambs. Uh, I think we're gonna need to do a bit of uh, uh, extra feeding on a few of these. So what we might end up doing once we get them sheared up and we can properly body condition score them, uh, we'll probably try feeding some that are a little thinner, a little extra um, grain, just to keep their energy levels up and uh, make sure they don't go downhill. I've had a couple that were already getting a little bit lethargic, not wanting to get up. So just before the shearer comes, I'll just show you how we're set up here. So we just set this up here. He doesn't have his own uh, carrier for it. So we just set this thing up here so that he can hang his uh, motor for his shear on there. And then we've got our Marweld handling system here set up. This is where they get locked in. And then we let them out the side here. Doesn't work too bad. It's not perfect yet, but and we fill up the race here. I'm not really using this the way it's uh, designed for because I don't find it works well in this uh, location, but uh, these will go like so. And then uh, we'll have this gate here. Hard to see maybe on the picture, but it's a wire gate right here. And uh, to push them through there push them through the race there so that's the plan and uh, I'll show you some shearing and then uh, we'll see from there So we're getting to the tail end of our shearing here and uh, I'll show you a close-up of one getting fully sheared just for fun why not it's so satisfying to see at least I always think so and uh, so I haven't given you tons of footage of this but uh, at any rate we're uh, nearing the end of this group these are all the ewe lambs I'm actually really pleased with the condition of them condition of them so far sorry these ewes here are all on weaning ration, which means they're getting very little grain, grain at the moment, and uh, mostly some dry grassy hay. So that's why they're complaining. But uh, if you're wondering why some sheared ones are in this group, it's just because they jumped a fence back when I had them separated in this uh, pen here, and they'll just go right through, of course. What it is, it's great for cleaning out because it's very... So as you can see here as we're shearing, it's a good chance to look at their, uh, how far along they are. You can tell that by how developed their udder is. And of course the body condition. So as you can see with this ewe, she's got quite a bag on her already. She's gonna be probably lambing in two, two and a half weeks. Um, probably right at the beginning of lambing and uh, she looks good as you can see her udder is nice and tight against her body and the nipples are nice and small all those things are good things that we like to see in uh, these first time ewes so the ewes the lambs ewe lambs are shearing real, really well sorry about that noisy ewe there that doesn't like to be locked up so as you can see, as our shearer here is uh, shearing the sheep, he moves them around as, as little as possible, just doing what needs to be done here in terms of maneuvering them as they are all in, uh, in lamb here. And uh, the, the less handling, the less rough we are with them, the better. 
And uh, that's always what we appreciate about Jerry here. He always does a, a nice, neat and tidy job, but also is uh, gentle on them. So we always appreciate that. But, uh, which is important when they're uh, just prior to lambing, so. Hey everyone, it's Friday morning and uh, yesterday we finished shearing all those uh, second year lammers, the ones that are in their second year and uh, the day before that we did all the ewe lambs. So it's always super informative uh, to go through that shearing period um, where you can see the condition of these sheep and you can see how far along they are in their pregnancy. None of these that were sheared have been preg tested ultrasound pregnancy tested we don't usually bother with our fall breedings so these would have been bred in november or started at least in november and uh so these here are the ewe lambs and those on there are the two-year-olds and uh overall i was very happy with what i saw most of them are in good shape there is one that we saw had a bit of a leg issue um, like it injured itself somewhere and we just can't figure out how it happened um, but apart from that we were very pleased we also noticed that for the most part we had good conception rates because we could see utter development in almost all of them i think in the ewe lambs we saw one that maybe two out of 50 that had no utter development yet so either they lost the embryo early and got rebred we're not sure yet um, and then the other group we saw one that seemed to have like an early abortion or something something strange was happening um, and we saw one that was open for sure or or much later than the rest so apart from that so in that group there's about 65 so one or two out of 65 that didn't get bred in the breeding period I thought was pretty good and uh, so that way we're happy and uh, we're excited to see how these guys are going to do when they start lambing. Two things uh, for sure that we've noticed is body condition and uh, utter development, um, just overall health of the sheep. It's always nice, uh, we're super happy with our shear, you know even in their later gestation because these some of these are only three weeks away from lambing two and a half to three weeks. Jerry's a good shearer. He does a good job. He does a nice clean job. And he's also gentle with the sheep. I always love how he handles them. So, unfortunately, he's not retiring yet, but he's, he's talking that way. Uh, I, I don't know exactly when, but uh, I know I probably won't have him for the next 10 years. Let's put it that way. So uh, that's the unfortunate part, but hopefully we'll be able to find a good uh, replacement when the time comes. I don't think I'm gonna take that on personally. Um, yesterday he had me do some shearing. I did all the bellies. I caught all the sheep, did all the bellies, and then he would take over for me every time like I kind of did in a previous video, you saw that. It's hard work. I think uh, with some time and practice I would get there, but uh, it's just not something I'm super interested in doing is doing all my own sheep every time, so. We'll see um, as the time goes. By the way, not to worry, we are going to be putting out um, a video on housing sheep, um, as well as kind of feedback on how we like this barn and, and why we chose this barn and all that stuff. That is coming. It's just gonna take a little more time for us to get all the information that we wanna um, put on that video together. And uh, so stay tuned for that. So something I wanna share with you just as a side note, as you can see, and I talked about on my previous video also, 
We're about to wean these lambs in this first group here. I don't know what all of you do, but uh, when it comes time to wean, we uh, take all the grain off of the ration. And uh, all we do is we feed them kind of a really low grade, low quality hay. Um, that doesn't mean dusty, junky hay, but just hay that's not highly nutritious. Um, and what we often do, so we'll feed the hay on this side. Once the ewes have picked through all the best stuff, we'll take the hay and we'll give it to these. Um, and in that way, we're lowering the plane of nutrition. Those lambs are still drinking off the mom, but the mom's not producing much milk anymore. And uh, the lambs are gonna start eating more creep feed because of that, which is what we want. And the milk of the ewe is going to continue to go downhill, which is also what we want. So we want to shut down that milk production so that when the lambs get weaned off the ewes, those ewes aren't producing tons of milk anymore. And uh, they'll go on to, so I think we do this for about five days. Um, then we'll take them right off, um, we'll wean them, and then those ewes will just be on a dry hay ration, uh, grassy hay, nothing too high quality for about a week. And then we'll probably start uh, flush feeding them for next breeding. So. Bit of my problem is space. Um, as you can see, this barn is totally full. So when we wean them, we'll probably have to bring the ewes outdoors and uh, find a spot for them out there. It might just be on pasture or something. Then we'll be able to bring, hopefully, some of the ones that are in the driving shed out there that are due to lamb in the next few weeks into this barn. So it's gonna be a bit of a shuffling act for a little bit um, as we get our next uh, lambing group into the barn and ready to go. We might have to do some clean out of manure pack and all that stuff. So, so maybe you think, why are we shearing our sheep right now? And uh, one of the reasons for that is because of course they're going to lamb. So it's really nice to have them cleaned up for that. Um, all the wool's out of the way, keeps the ewe cleaner. The lambs can find the udders easier. Um, it's just a nice way of keeping them cleaned up for lambing period. Um, also, the weather really isn't a concern at this time of the year anymore. Um, we are expecting some cold nights of minus six and that sort of thing in the next few days but after that it's uh everything's above zero and uh i don't think it's going to be anything of concern so um also sheep can handle a fair bit um during that period anyways um even without their wool they're inside they're out of the wind and uh they're going to be fine so also by way of follow up to our previous video where I uh, told you about a bit of our issue with wool loss. Um, I've talked to various people. I know uh, a bunch of you mentioned it was lice. Um, so something we're gonna probably try. We didn't do it with this last shearing. I just couldn't get uh, the stuff together quick enough, but uh, we're gonna try it next time. Um, we can at least rule it out if it is lice, but um, I did go on to our Omafra website um, where they show you, I think it was Omafra. Anyways, I went onto a website which showed you how to check for lice and sheep. You're supposed to go down the side of the ewe. So let's say we take this ewe here. Her wool is actually growing back already. Um, or we take this one right here. You're supposed to go down the side of their wool and about a strip like that far. So they say 10 centimeters or so. And uh, about 10 times on each side of the U, you're supposed to part the wool and see if you can find any of the, the lice uh, creatures on there. And uh, I did that. So we're gonna go like this. the straw that's also kind of in the way I'm not seeing any right there so
there are any, there aren't like huge volumes of them. And I couldn't find a single one. Now, I'm not an experienced eye at this, but I would have thought if I had a major infestation here, I would be able to at least locate one or two of them. But zip, nothing. So does that mean it don't have it? Not necessarily, but I have a funny feeling we don't. I think it has something to do with uh, nutritional stress to some degree. Um, maybe it was something they went through when they lambed. I don't know. But I know a lot of them have actually started growing their wool back, like I showed you with this one here. And that one there, it's coming back. Um, so it's kind of strange. They seem to lose it. Um, they go through a week or two of that, and then it just starts growing back. Like that one's growing back again. Um, so it's kind of strange. But again, we haven't seen anything else negative coming out of that. Um, they still seem to perform well. They're... They appear healthy, they're getting up, they're eating a lot. So none of those issues. So anyways, that's that's what I found out so far. Um, thanks for your feedback on that. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens from there. Maybe we'll try that lice off stuff that uh, people have suggested. And then there's Albert the Ram there. He's our, our big ram that uh, as soon as we sheared him, he went and rubbed himself against the gate, the rusty gate, and uh, he got his new coat all dirty. Go figure. So maybe some of you think, uh, you know, why are you always talking about body condition scoring and that sort of thing? And uh, for those of you who aren't sheep farmers um, and maybe aren't sure what that term means, it's basically looking at the condition, how much body fat or meat is on the animal. Um, and you can usually see that by looking at their backs. So if you notice this one right here, it's a nice flat back. You don't see any bones picking out what's uh, poking out whatsoever. Um, as opposed to this one here laying down, it's also got a mark on it. And uh, I've treated it, but as you can see on the back, um, the bone is sticking out a little bit and I can try to get closer, but she'll probably get up. Um, but it's so important to keep their body condition score quite good, especially before they lamb. So this one here has been having trouble, um, a little bit of difficulty getting around, and I wonder if it just hasn't been getting enough energy. Um, there she goes now. So she's just a little bit sluggish, um, lethargic. And if you look at her body condition score, it's not good. And uh, so, it's so important to um, keep good an eye on that, especially with your ewe lambs. So these are all ewe lambs. They've grown out really quite well that I'm happy with them, but we got to really keep a close eye on, on their nutrition. And I talked to various producers this past week, um, especially dealing with ewe lambs. Um, and it's such a fine balance between overfeeding these uh, ewe lambs and underfeeding them. And uh, the temptation is to overfeed them to be honest um, because we just don't want that sort of thing happening at all but uh, it's really finding that sweet spot between uh, yeah just the right condition and I wouldn't say I've got it figured out by any means uh, last year we definitely had a few with uh, pregnancy toxemia not sure if that's exactly the reason this one's having that but the problem is once they stop eating a bit they don't get up as fast the the situation just compounds itself and uh, they don't get to the bunk as quick, so they're not getting as much feed as the other ones when it's grain feeding time. So then they get less and less and less and the problem just gets worse. So we're gonna probably try and find a spot to separate this one um, and maybe any others that look like they're a little bit under condition, um, just to take away any competition for them and uh, get them what they need so that they don't go any further behind. So this one's already had a calcium treatment, oftentimes um, it can be a lack of calcium. Um, there's a big draw in their system for calcium in their late gestation. So that's often the reason this happens, um, as well as not enough energy in the diet. So anyway, that's why I talk about body condition score so much, and that's why it's nice to get them sheared, as I said before. And uh, you know kind of exactly where they're at.
Anyways guys, that's the end of the video. I hope I didn't blab on too much. I know there wasn't a ton of action in this video, but um, yeah, some of this stuff, uh, there's quite a science behind it all. And uh, it, uh, it takes a bunch of collaboration with vets, nutritionists, other producers, and all that stuff to really uh, figure these things out and uh, to make things work. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this informative and uh, we'll talk to you in the next one.